Hey friends, welcome to the podcast. I'm Lee Brown and you're listening to Crazy Shit in Real Estate. And if you are one of our special extra good friends, you're seeing this for the first time in video on YouTube as we bring the video portion of the show to you because I know y'all want to see my guest and I put on lipstick just for the occasion. And of course I have on my very most expensive jewelry. And I told my guest here, Brad, I was telling him a minute ago that I'm just copying the super successful podcasters who would be my favorites, Joe Rogan and Dan Bongino, which is frankly why I can have the shit in my title because they cuss more than I do. So for the record, don't be judgmental. You want more of the love fest, more of the good stuff, more of life lessons, entrepreneur knowledge, how to raise your kids. I mean, we got it all right here. Subscribe to the YouTube channel for more. Subscribe to the podcast. Five stars, please. Today, our guest is from the, well, we're recording this in January, so we'll say it's from the cold state and windy state of Nebraska. We've got Brad Fricky with us today. Brad, welcome to the show. Hello, Lee. Good morning, and thank you for having me. And yes, cold is an understatement. Uh, wind chill, negative 15 right now. Are you for real? That's way too cold. <laughs> yeah, we have not been out of the single digits for three days. So is it fair of me to tell you that in North Carolina, while we're recording this, it's currently uh, 28 degrees, but it's going to be 68 in on Monday? Totally fair. We live where we live. That's, that's true. I mean, the, the only problem I have with Nebraska is the same problem I had when I lived in Iowa is that the wind doesn't stop. It's annoying. 60 it miles an hour a minute. couple nights ago. Mm. So... If you're in real estate in Nebraska, do you have to do different things at negative 15? What do you tell people to do if the house is vacant? I mean, we tell them to leave the faucets dripping, but is that enough when it's super cold? Uh, here, a lot of them winterize if they're gonna be truly vacant. Uh, they have services that come in, unhook the water and blow air through all the lines and things like that to prepare them for the winters. Um, you know, I carry a shovel, I carry sand. I've shoveled sidewalks to get people into houses before. So there's a little bit of everything. Um, as a realtor, one of the biggest challenges is putting in the yard sign in oh, the frozen yeah. ground. So a little- so what do you do? Uh, you carry your uh, Dewalt drill with a good uh, three quarter to one inch long bit and drill two holes to slide the sign in. Well, that's probably safer than what I was thinking. I was thinking a blowtorch might soften <laughs> the ground up enough to get the sign in, but that's probably not safe for most realtors to use a blowtorch. <laughs> not most of them. Oh, okay. So Brad, tell our listeners where exactly you're located because all they know, frankly, is that Nebraska is in the middle and how long you've been in real estate, anything they should know about your background. And for the record, people, I've already asked if he's related to Janie Fricky and he swears he's not, but he'll have to do some research on that. But tell him who you are. Oh, well, I've been in real estate for about 17 and a half years in the Omaha metro area. And uh, I started when my daughter was just born and was a Mr. I was Mr. Mom for four and a half years while I got my career started and uh, have never looked back. I've uh, enjoyed real estate. I did investing before I could legally own it. Had to put it in my dad's name. I bought my first lot and uh, just always had a passion for real estate. Okay, so go back to that. You bought your first property before you could legally own it. How old were you? I can't remember if I was 17 or 18, but in Nebraska, you have to be 19 to own real estate. Why? Uh, because Nebraska is a 19, you're an adult. So you cannot own real estate in Nebraska unless you're 19. So I put it in my dad's name. Okay. I, I, I got to stop on that for a minute because this makes no sense to me at all. But can you drink in Nebraska at 19? No, you can't drink until 21. Can you get married? How old do you have to be to get married legally? I Without believe... I believe if you're under 19, your parent has to consent. In Nebraska, we consider 19 an adult. That's so weird. So a child can't emancipate at 18 like they can in many states? Not to my knowledge. But they can go to the military when they're 18. Correct. National Guard when you're 17. Correct. I have uh, been in some <laughs> panels that discussed that, what we allow people to do at certain ages. Um, we can let them fight for our country, but we can't let them do other things. I just, I don't understand why you, I mean, the whole alcohol argument, that's a whole different discussion. Right. And of course, we're sitting on the anniversary of prohibition, but the idea that you can't own dirt doesn't make any sense to me at all. So you said the first thing you bought was a lot? Yeah, I bought an empty lot at a uh, small private lake in our area. Well, large private lake for our area. 
Um, some, an older lady had owned it for 20 years. Her husband had passed, said she was never going to use it and she just wanted to get rid of it. So, um, she gave me a really good price on it and I actually sold it in la on a land contract and, uh, received payments for 18 months. But so that was my first experience in real estate and I've never looked back. So what did you use your lot for? Did you have a plan for it or you just wanted it? I was just flipping it. Uh, I always tell people I've been flipping since before flipping was cool. My dad did it when I was little and uh, it was before it was popular. Hey, you know, children do what they see. And so you saw your dad doing it, which means your daughter, who I'm going to guess is now 17 and a half. Yep. What is, what's her viewpoint on real estate? Is she interested in it or does she think, oh God, dad's a realtor, no way? Uh, she's probably more introvert, not so much outgoing with people. So she's looking at going to uh, the College of Engineering here in Nebraska. Very nice. How old do you have to be to get a real estate license in Nebraska? 18. So you can sell somebody else's property, but you can't own it. To my knowledge, yes. Okay, Nebraska unicameral, unicameral legislature, y'all could fix that. That's crazy. All right, so anyway, your daughter should totally get her license. Hey, Brad's daughter, when you're listening to your dad on this, you'll probably watch it because you people are videoing your age, but get your license because your dad can explain to you the beauty of referral fee revenue as you become an engineering brain out in the world. So talk to your dad, then Brad, let me know when she gets her license at 18 because we all should have done that, frankly. So you've been a realtor all this time. Talk to me about it a little bit. Somebody says, hey, what happened to you in real estate besides sand and shovels? And I, I was going to say blow torches, but that was in my imagination. So tell me about your real estate life. What's been the craziest shit you've encountered that you never expected ever? Well, I have a go-to story that uh, for everybody. Then um, that's why I reached out. Uh, it was probably about 12 years ago. And it happened right on the street I live on, still live on that street today in Southwest Omaha. And um, my wife was outside on a nice December day, about 45 degrees with the kids, and uh, started yelling for the kids to get into the house. And I looked out and the SWAT teams were all over um, our street invading a house across the street and a few doors down. In Omaha? In Omaha. So that's, that was a big deal, especially in the part of town I live in. We don't even see the police all that often. Um, so we come to find out we had a young uh, gentleman just graduated from college, uh, an attorney, opened up a law office with another attorney, and he was uh, trying to do things to uh, make some money that were maybe not legal and was caught uh, dealing uh, meth. Meth? meth you don't often hear about attorneys doing meth no you do not but it's entrepreneurial i mean i always think that a drug dealer is just a, a lost realtor who never got a license and they didn't know there was a better way to be an entrepreneur but <laughs> how did he get busted was he buying too much sudafed or did somebody smell um, it or what's the story did your wife get the, the scott the gossip from the neighbors uh, we did not get any gossip about how they really found out about him he was not making it in the house um, he was just dealing. I did ask that question. It was and, a storefront. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, well, there was a lot of traffic at night and a lot of, uh, you know, different vehicles in and out. So I'm sure somebody was on to him. Uh, but how that leads into my real estate was, uh, you know, more than likely he was going to be preoccupied for a while. So yeah. wasn't going to be needing his home. And I was getting my mail one day, um, I don't know, a month or so later. And met a gentleman at the mailbox I didn't recognize. And like yourself, I'm a real estate agent. I talked to everybody and I struck up a conversation and ended up being his father. Oh. And so I uh, worked with his dad and his dad had all the, you know, things to do uh, with his son and that. So I, I ended up listing the house about two or three months later after they got things settled down. Well, now, one thing the public might not know, and a lot of the people who listen to the podcast, and I don't know who's watching it, frankly, because y'all are brand new to the watching piece, but on the listing side, we have a lot of people who are not realtors who listen to the show, and they might not know that we were kind of halfway joking about the house being the storefront for meth, but you were very quick to say 
he wasn't manufacturing it there. So why don't you explain what that means in Nebraska real estate terms as to why there's a difference? Well, in Nebraska, we actually do not have that on our disclosures. I know some states make you disclose yeah. if they have cooked <laughs> meth in the house. Uh, we do not have that, but obviously we're aware of it. And uh, so I, I always made sure everybody knew that and I did my homework to find out um, you know, what was going on to the house because of the chemicals that can be in the house if that's what he was doing. Well, and understand people, if y'all are listening to this in a different state, if you're buying and selling real estate, you should ask your realtor what the laws are regarding disclosure of methamphetamine production in a house because in some states, as Brad mentioned, it's a disclosure item and in some it's not. But regardless, it can be an environmental and a health issue. And what I want y'all to really notice about what Brad said is that this is the difference between just a regular part-time, doesn't really give a rip, not committed real estate agent versus a professional realtor who says, you know, I don't have to tell, but the right thing to do is to do the most research possible to protect the people I'm representing. And it does make a difference when you're buying and selling real estate, because if you buy it and you don't have Brad at your side, and nobody asked the questions, it becomes caveat emptor because you bought it as you looked at it and your inspector didn't know, you could wind up with the problem. So always ask, but it's ask your professional realtor, what do you know about the laws? Your really great realtors know the laws because there's you know continuing education they have to do every year. Some do it to pay attention and some do it to just check the box. And you don't want that, it's more to it than that. So what would you say was your biggest learning experience from helping dad through that process? Because obviously the dad was in an emotional place trying to help his son who I'm just going to take the wild guess that dad didn't know son was operating in that capacity in addition to his law life. So how did you help navigate the process for everybody involved? Well, that um, I helped, you know, I reached out to the dad. He was living in a different state. Uh, I think, it, you know, we we made a little bit of a connection in the two or three times he was down here so that he had the trust in me. Um, they completely emptied the house. There was obviously concerns with the traffic that had been in and out of the house, you know, worrying about who would want to try to get in there and the security of the house. So, uh, you know, I went past the house regularly, obviously living on my block. I wouldn't know if I saw anything going on. Um, so those are some of the things that we discussed you know, preparing to put the house on the market. Um, and that led to uh, the crazy shit in real estate story that I'm leading into. So uh, yeah, the house, it had been for sale for a few weeks and I get a phone call one evening, totally not out of the norm, you know, looking at the caller ID and that. And um, guy tells me, I'm just gonna say Tom is his name because I don't remember, it was like 12 years ago says his name's Tom, has a friend in the neighborhood, him and his wife like the area, and he asked typical buyer questions about my listing. And uh, I let Tom know that the house was very easy to show, that I could you know, get access to it pretty quickly from the owner, and that I lived in the area, so if he wanted to look at it sometime, just let me know. And that's how our call ended that evening. And then the fun and games began the next day. So go ahead, uh, go ahead. What happened? What happened? <laughs> so what you, happened? You fell I'm, into a trap. Yeah. So my uh, kids are eating breakfast. It's probably six thirty in the morning. Uh, my wife's in the shower that typical morning, and um, I get a voicemail on my phone, and I recognize the phone number from the night before. So I listen to the voicemail, and he says his name is Tom, and uh, he's with the U.S. Marshals. And if I don't open up the house he is going to knock the door down that I had a couple minutes to respond. At your house, at your personal house? Well, he's gonna knock down the house that's of the door for sale because he's there serving a warrant on the owner of the home. Uh, so he called me trying to get me to open the door, but I didn't answer my phone at 6.30 in the morning yet. And uh, luckily I got the voicemail right away. And so I, Went over, knocked on the bathroom door, told my wife to hurry up to watch the kids. She, Seriously, uh, dude? You're fixing yeah. to leave your house to go at the 6.30 in the morning? Oh, Brad. So I, uh, I, my wife, concerned if it was truly somebody with law enforcement, 
So I step out, look down the street, and our whole street is full of black unmarked vehicles. There was about five of them. And then around the corner was a uh, community canine vehicle. So I uh, went on to tell my wife, I'm pretty sure this is legit. I don't think it's any friends from his, you know, previous engagements. So I threw a jacket on in that and uh, headed out the door and went to the house. Um, the house was completely surrounded, guys fully armed, uh, you know, uh, bulletproof vests, everything. And I walked up to the property with my uh, lockbox key in hand. And uh, this was before we used our phones. And the guy walked up to me, introduced himself, and he was with the U.S. Marshals. And I accessed the key out of the key box. And me and uh, the gentleman, Tom, I don't remember his name, and two guys with jackets on and fully loaded weapons and everything are standing on the front porch. I uh, asked him if I could see a warrant because I said, Good question. I didn't let you know, uh, you know, how do I know you legitimately have the warrant? He gave me a piece of paper. I always joke it could have been the Best Buy ad because I really didn't read it, but he handed me a piece of paper. So I'm going to say it was the warrant. Good. Um, at that time, I proceeded to tell the gentleman that I've had all the contact with that the homeowner is not in the house. He looked at me very unhappy and said, yesterday on the phone, you told me this house was occupied, which I did. And as you know, Lee, we don't advertise our houses are vacant. Ever. So I told him yesterday on the phone, you told me you wanted to buy it. Busted. And um, let's just say that all his friends turned bright red because they wanted to laugh, but they weren't allowed to. And he kind of nodded like, okay, you got me there. And um, I proceeded to open the door. They made sure that he wasn't there. And um, all, most of them all left except for my main contact, Tom. Hey, hang on a second here, Brad. They're all armed, wearing bulletproof vests. Yes. Did they offer you a bulletproof vest and a gun before they let you open the door and go in first? Not at all. That's not cool. That is not cool at all. Did they get in front of you and be like, we got you, Brad. We know you're I, the realtor here. I just stayed on the porch and let them go in. Um, I knew, I knew where no one was home for sure. I knew what was going on. Um, you know, and I let them know, um, at that point, after they went into the house and they made sure that he wasn't there, that I wasn't pr protecting him, uh, everyone left. I secured the property. And uh, the gentleman we're calling Tom asked me if I knew where he was. And I said, absolutely. And at that point, uh, we walked uh, to my vehicle and that, and I got all the information to contact his dad. And I gave him all the information to contact my contacts. And at that point, he threatened me. For what? He told me that if he was not where I told him he was, that he would be coming back to arrest me um, for aiding and abetting or something like that because he did not want me to call the dad or anybody in case they would run. And you're like, dude, I'm just a realtor looking for a commission man trying to sell a house. Exactly. So now you know where my uh, crazy shit in real estate story came from. I was threatened not to talk to my client until uh, at least 24 hours. So what happened? Tom called, got hold of dad. Yep. Tom got, got a hold of dad. Everything was uh, worked out. He had actually worked through the county court system and everything was going fine. And uh, the son was no longer in jail. He had been released to his parents. He had gone home with his parents. You know, his parents were doing all the things they need to do as a parent. Um, but obviously the U.S. Marshals Service and the county courts don't talk because he had been released from county court that's just released. like in Die Hard. Remember in yeah. Die Hard, they were all fighting over who had jurisdiction? Yeah. So really, yeah, he had been out for probably 45 days or so with his parents, and the U.S. Marshals didn't know it. 45 days? So was he over at his daddy's house? Uh, no. Well, he was with his dad, yes. He wasn't, I mean, he, they had put him into rehab and things like that, and so oh. I don't know for sure. I just know he was completely released uh, to his father. 
and that was my point of contact at that point. Uh, so did Tom or anybody from the marshal's office call you again? Did you have to be a witness in anything? Or were you oh, I never out? heard another word about it. Um, it's totally fell off the radar. He should have at least called you back and bought a house from you. He owed yeah. you that much. Yeah. Well, I think that there, his friends are probably still, still telling the story from the front porch when I spoke up and uh, held my ground against the U.S. Marshals. They're like, he's my kind of realtor. He told the truth <laughs> after he protected his own safety. Because, by the way, public people, Brad's not playing there. That's a safety thing. We don't advertise what's vacant and where's vacant because that's asking for trouble. And if you are a realtor listening to this, you should take a note here from experience speaking. If a buyer calls you and wants to look at a house, set the appointment, don't advertise that it's vacant because you're putting yourself at risk. And obviously, what if your buyer is U.S. Marshal wearing a bulletproof vest with a gun and you don't have one? Don't advertise that. I still can't believe they like put you in harm's way. That's not cool. I didn't even think of it like that until you said something. Look, it's just because I don't trust all of our governmental officials right now. So, just <laughs> <laughs> Especially when you got to be 19 to own a piece of real estate. Y'all need to fix that in Nebraska. Maybe you should make that happen, Brad. I will see what I can do. I've got uh, political action days next week. Oh, we love Hill Days. And by the way, if you're not a real estate professional, you might not know, Realtors are always in our state capitals lobbying to protect your property rights because, frankly, Y'all, if y'all knew half the shit that we dealt with in the back hallways, you'd be very angry, but don't worry because your professional realtors are handling it for you because there's no national association of homeowners. There's just us, the realtors, and we go to bat for our neighborhoods and our communities, even if the house is owned by somebody who got tangled up in meth and their dad had to fix it and you have to stand up to the marshals. And so, Brad, we have to know, did the house actually sell? Did you sell the house? I did not sell the house. It, uh, it was on the market for about six months. This was in probably 08, 09. So if I'm uh, doing my math, the recession was kicking in. It was a crappy yes. time to be in real estate. Yeah, that same neighborhood last year had an average market time of seven days. Are you still living there or did y'all move? Nope, I still live there. So if somebody buys in your neighborhood, do you say, hey, you can tell you the story about this house down here. Do you tell the story all the time? Um, not that often. I don't want to give our neighborhood that kind of reputation, but, uh, you know, every neighborhood has stuff that happens. Every, because, you know, houses are occupied by humans and humans have stories. <laughs> and it's why we love real estate, right? Because we get to be a part of the stories. That's right. We, uh, we put the stories together. But I appreciate your wife for looking out for your safety when you were about to just trot right out the door and she's like, hang on a second, buddy, let's just check this out. So good job. Good job, wife. Because, you know, in real estate, we do things by ourselves a lot, and we forget to lean on other people. Yes, safety is a major thing in our industry and is becoming more and more prominent. Uh, just listen to some podcasts last week about it. Well, I was all excited because yesterday I met a new technology that's attached to open houses. It has some cool safety features built in, so hopefully you'll hear more about that in the future because it's pretty cool stuff because we got to look out for ourselves. So, Brad, if anybody is looking for an amazing realtor in Omaha who knows – where stories are located <laughs> and doesn't tell everything they know, even though he could, and they want to help encourage your daughter in her engineering future and to get a license. And we'll encourage the rest of your family too, because we love encouraging people. How can they find you and your professional life? Uh, they can find me on bradfricky.com and, uh, or 402-991-9263 is my phone number. Uh, and I'm in Omaha, Nebraska with Remax. It's okay, people. I know you didn't write it down because I know my people, but everything's in the show notes for this episode. If you're subscribing to the channel, you can also see it down there in the little comment section. So hit Brad up if you need help in Omaha. And by the way, if you did not know, Omaha is home to the world's finest sporting event ever, which is College World Series. That is my favorite sporting event of any sport ever. If you've never been to Omaha to College World Series, you should totally go. And then Brad can sell you an investment house while you're there or a primary residence if you're looking to get into the Midwest because Nebraska is a pretty good place to be. But Brad, thank you for coming on the show. And Thanks for, for having me. About the marshals. And I hope that if any marshals are listening to this, you will take better care of your realtors when you need to sneak into a house and put a bulletproof vest on them. And Brad, 
keep it up, have fun at Hill Days, doing the hard work for your clients of the future because they don't even know you're working for them yet, but there you are. Thank you, Lee. All right, troops, if you want to be featured on the podcast, you've got some story to tell. You want to top Brad. You've got something more exciting than an attorney doing meth and U.S. Marshals and guns and unmarked vehicles with a house that he didn't even get to sell. I mean, buy a house from the man, make up for that lost commission from 12 years ago. You should reach out to me, hit me in the comments at Lee Brown on Twitter to be featured in a future episode of Crazy Shit in Real Estate. Hit subscribe for more. Give me five stars because you love me and we'll see you next time. <laughs>